Welcome to the Basilica Parish of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. Today is the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. In our Gospel today, Jesus reminds his disciples and us to be attentive to the signs of God's presence all around us. Today, the Gospel speaks to us of sacrifice. We understand that whether we are being asked to give our time, our talent, or our treasure, the meaning of our gift is not, is not measured by the size of our offering, but the depth of faith and love which inspired it. Please know that all are welcome here today. Regardless of our age, orientation, race, whether we worship regularly or only when we can, whether we embrace the life of the church or are struggling to find God in the midst of it all, Jesus comes to all of us, saints and sinners alike this day. It is the mission of our parish to welcome and open wide our doors to all who come here to pray. Our celebrant for this Mass is our Pastor Father Mike Petrano. Let us lift our hearts in worship and praise as together we stand and join on our entrance hymn, Joy is Everywhere. Joy like a fountain springs, joy is, is the song, song we sing. sing. Joy from the love we bring, joy, joy is everywhere. Heart. Joy when we do our, our part. part, joy is everywhere. Sing Hosanna, <coughs> let our hearts rejoice. Sing Hosanna, lift a thankful voice. Sing Hosanna, know, know that, that God, God is here. here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace, the peace, the love of our Lord Jesus be with you always. Good morning, everyone. Welcome today to our celebration. Welcome to all those who are joining us online today. In the Gospel today, we hear about Jesus talking about the signs that we'll see in the sun, the moon, and the stars. I was thinking about yesterday afternoon, the weather got our attention, didn't it? Right? I don't think anybody said, like, Oh, really? Did it rain today? I mean, that one got everybody's attention. And that's kind of the, the spirit of, of attention that we hear in the gospel today. So as we come together to pray, let's ask the mercy of God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise our God. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Let us take time to be quiet within, and ready to hear and be attentive to God's word. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with con constancy the author of all that is good, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days I, Daniel, heard this word of the Lord. At that time there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress, since nations began until the time. At that time your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever, Others shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool, for by one off offering he had made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will no longer give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and all the powers in heaven will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds and from the ends of the earth to the end of the sky. So learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches become tender and sprout leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near, even at the door. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have been accomplished. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But as for the day, the time, or the hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. The reading in the Gospel today makes me think of one of my favorite poems. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to know that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. A little short poem by Robert Frost. I always thought that Robert Frost, when he wrote that poem, had in mind things that I know about the physical world because before I studied for the priesthood, I was studying physics. And so I learned about the universe and about the various speculations about how the universe might end. Will it expand and become an icy world or contract and become a great ball of fiery energy like it was in the beginning? Robert Frost didn't know anything about that. He was writing his poem in 1920. Um, he was actually thinking about a picture he saw Dante's Inferno in the Sistine Chapel, that, that mural of the uh, Inferno and the story about that, and, and which, uh, in which there are sort of two different, two different kinds of hell, one in which you're immersed up to your neck in ice water, and the other, the traditional one about fire. You should probably, like, don't tell this to the kids. This is like the stuff that gives you nightmares and all, right? So anyway, what, what is this all about? 
Why is Jesus talking about signs in the sun and the moon and the heavens? Certainly at, the, at that time that he is writing, people thought that, that the earth hadn't been here that long. They thought it was as long as the biblical stories that they knew, and they probably would have had a good bit of trouble locating them in time. We're better in our history and archaeology than they were. And so they also probably thought that, that whatever the future was, was coming soon, not that long away. Now that we have all this knowledge about the physical world, we know that how long might the universe last? Well, they say that the universe could last billions of more years, and the sun itself hundreds of millions before the sun expands and gobbles up all of the inner planets of the solar system. Either way, hundreds of millions of years is long enough that I don't have to worry about that, right? And neither do you. It's so far, who cares? It's a long way away. It's actually that kind of, well, the future is far away kind of thinking that, that Jesus is really bringing to his disciples. We're reading this gospel now because we're pretty close to the end of our liturgical year, as we say. In other words, next week is the Feast of Christ, Christ the King, and after that, the great start over as we begin Advent and start looking forward to the birth of the Lord and his beginnings of life. Next week, we call that feast the Feast of Christ, the King of the Universe. And so there's this great sense in the Gospel today that we're really thinking about what it is that God is doing with the universe, and more importantly, what is happening with each of us. Jesus says these words to his disciples because he's trying to create urgency. He is with them now. They're on their way to Jerusalem. Important things are going to be happening. And so if they are going to be people of faith, if they're going to take up the kingdom, if they're going to really be on his side, then today's the day. And so that's what all of that conversation about. You know the signs. You can read it when the fig tree starts to look like it's going to be in bloom and summer is here now. So don't miss it. A good bit of thinking that we all have as people is become so future-oriented that we kind of put off, don't we, the things that are really important. Now I read you a very profound poem. Now I'll tell you a silly story, but it's kind of good. I was on a retreat once, and the retreat director gave out these little round discs, little wooden discs you know, like, a, like a, about the size of a quarter or a half dollar. And, and, on the, uh, and on the disc was just written two words, to it, to it. The retreat director gives these out and then says to us, you know, a lot of you are thinking about things that one day you will do when you get around to it, right? And you probably think about that too. Something like, well, one day I'll really work on, I'll really start to really work on my prayer life. I'll try to get a little closer to God. I'll try to really do some things. One day I'll take the kids on a trip. We'll do something together. You know, one day I'll really spend some more time with the people that I really are important to me. One day I'll volunteer down at the church. We've got to throw a commercial in, right? One day, one day, one day. One day I'll do things that I really want to do that are more important than the things that I'm doing every day. And we often express that to other people and saying like, and I'm going to do these things someday when I get around to it. And so the retreat director said, I just gave you a round to it. Did you get that before I said that? <laughs> I told you it was silly. <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's like one of those silly things that's so true that it actually becomes powerful. He says, now you don't have any more excuses. You got the round to it. So stop messing around and start doing the things that you think about when you're on retreat and you're making resolutions for the kinds of things that you really might do in your life. What is Jesus saying to his disciples? He's saying that the hopes of all eternity are the hopes that you have as you begin to follow me the bringing of the kingdom of God, the revealing of the purposes of God, the fulfillment of God's will. And maybe a lot of you have been waiting to have a round to it so that you could get around to it. I don't know what that's like in Aramaic, something like that. 
But what he's really saying to them is, I'm the round to it. I am here with you now. I am present. There is no reason not to have urgency about the things of God right today in your life and in your world. I am with you. I am in the church. I am at the altar. I am in the sacraments you receive. I am in the prayers that you say. And all of that is about the presence of God right here and right now in the present. So when you think yourself, what will you do when you finally get that round to it? Well, I'm not giving you one today because you have one already. It is the presence of the living God. It's not all in the past. It's not far into the future. It is right now. Let's stand together now. Let's profess the faith that we share in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is our faith that God hears our prayers and answers them. With confidence, let us pray today. The response to our prayer is, Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among the nations, for an end to war and violence, for the safe return of military service, women and men, for their families who long for their return, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an end to all prejudice and racism, racism, particularly on Long Island and this local community, for light, wisdom, and clear thinking in the face of fear, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those whose lives have been affected by economic and financial decisions, for families who are moving to new homes, for the recently unemployed, for the courage and determination of all who are struggling in these challenging times, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who most need our prayers, for the very sick, the very poor, those far from home, those who have lost their way, those living with depression, those who are tempted to despair, and for the names of the sick in the parish bulletin and our book of intentions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, our loved ones, and those of our community who have gone before us, and for all who are mourning the passing of a dear one, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. At this Mass, we pray especially today for the people of the parish and Dominic Sirica, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we bring all of our prayers before you today. We pray them in the name of Jesus and the power of the Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. As we bring our gifts to the table of the Lord, let us join our voices in singing, We Come to Your Feast, which can be found in your music program. Once again, that's We Come to Your Feast. We place upon your table a gleaming cloth of light, the weaving of our stories, the fabric of our lives, Dreams of those before us, the ancient hopes and vows, the promise of our future, our needing and our nurture, lie here before our eyes. 
We come to your feast. We come to your feast. The young and the old, the bright and the bold, the greatest and the least. We come to your feast. We come to your Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live, we move, and we have our being. Each day you show us your love, your Holy Spirit dwelling within, giving us here on earth the hope of unending joy. For your gift of the Spirit who raised Jesus is the foretaste and the promise of an eternal feast in heaven. In thankful praise and company with the saints, we glorify your power. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Yes. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We stand together now, we pray for the building of God's kingdom, the words the Lord taught us to pray each day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. Amen. To each other we extend a word, a gesture, a sign of God's peace. Now, as we are receiving the presence of the Lord here in our church today, I also invite those who join us online today to be one with us in mind and spirit in our prayer and in our closeness to the Lord today. Please open your music program and join in singing today's communion hymn, Jesus, You Are Bread for Us.
The Knights of Columbus have a limited number of Christmas cards left. This is the last weekend to purchase cards after Mass. On Thanksgiving Day, we will celebrate Mass at 10 a.m. Please plan to be with us for this beautiful celebration of gratitude to God for all our blessings. Join us next Saturday evening at 7 p.m. as we celebrate our community Thanksgiving concert, featuring our own Basilica Choir and the Full Gospel Choir from King's Chapel. Our religious education program is in need of a Sunday morning catechist for grade three, a small class of four children. If you can help, please contact our office. Friday Eucharistic Adoration takes place after our Mass on Fridays. Come spend an hour with us to pray for healing, peace, and strength in our families. Thank you for praying together with us today. Please take home a, a copy of the bulletin for there are so many wonderful and exciting upcoming events here at Sacred Hearts. A lot of our, our best events are in the Thanksgiving and Adv Advent season. I hope you can join us next Saturday for our Thanksgiving concert. Uh, plan to come Thanksgiving Day. We always have a beautiful Mass and lessons and carols are coming. Lots of great things in the future. So make sure you take home five copies of the bulletin today and give them to everybody you know, okay? Five. <laughs> Let's pray and give God thanks. We have partaken of these gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. Thank you for praying together today. Thank you for all who have joined us online. May the Spirit of our God who calls us to him be with us now and always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everyone. And if the Knights still have some cards, buy them all out. Send them home. They're standing out in the cold. And start sending your cards and greetings. Thank you, Lainey. Our sending, forth, our sending forth hymn this morning can be found in your music program. Please stay and sing with us, Blessed Be the Lord. Once again, that's Blessed Be the Lord. Stop. 